Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. And I am still Paul Bryant. Thank goodness. And we're here in Palm Springs, California with the opportunity to drive the 2023 Kia Sportage. And th there's a lot of changes here. You know what? I expected for there to be changes because it's a generational car for the Sportage. I don't know that I was prepared for this much of a change. The LED is really nice. There, there are a couple of different front ends that are gonna come with this car, depending on the trim level and depending on the powertrain that you've got as well. It's got like the Kia Signature Tiger Nose thing, the latest adaptation of that. But the sizes are different. Yeah. It's taller, bigger, wider. Oh, overall, yeah. I mean, the, the vehicle is seven inches longer than the previous one, three inches uh, wider. The interior capacities, we'll show you the, those a little bit later too. Face it, there's a basic couple of building blocks that every designer has to work with. Right. You've got this chunk, you've got this chunk, you've got a front, you got a back, and everybody is trying to get aerodynamic efficiency. Sure, which is better fuel economy and better performance to you. Sure it is. But you know, there there is a perfect form to put into a wind tunnel Yeah. to get the lowest drag coefficient. Which makes it slipperier through the wind. And everything that you do design-wise mm -hmm. compromises that. Sure. You move this, then you, you gotta you, move that. Exactly. So this vehicle is longer, it's yeah. taller, it's wider, it's got a longer wheelbase, which gives more space in the back seat, and we'll show you the seating as well. And they gave it, they, they gave the sides a lot more strength than they yeah. used to have. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say strength, I'm not talking about steel strength or what's underneath visual strength right it's bold yeah it's very bold like a lot of their new designs i did notice some cues that were different to me like the quarter windows here right next to where the mirrors to stop a blind spot they put a window here i mean they had big pieces of glass and i think that's important all the way back here too as if as if there was a third row which there isn't and then these design cues like these unique pattern that they put in the C-pillar. I think that's really nicely done. and gives it a very modern edge. I like it a lot. Do you remember when we went to drive EV6? Yes, I do. And what did I say about EV6 when we were at the winery at lunch? You loved the design. You thought it was beautiful. I loved it, but what appealed to me most? I don't remember. <laughs> I liked the butt. Oh, that's it was, right. <laughs> you remember? Yes, he said he liked the butt of the car. Yeah, it, it looked, you know, the rear end of the car was terrific. Uh, right, and that means you got this wing that's integrated with the third brake light, yes. that new Kia logo, Sportage, and then on this side it says HEV. This is the hybrid. We've also driven the, the uh, off-road, the X-Line, and obviously spent the day in this car, and this car is filthy, so we apologize for it being filthy. New taillights, LEDs. We don't drive clean places. No, we don't. Not with this. No, and then, that, of course, that rear valence as well. Yep. It's, it's a nice detail. I think they did a nice job with the butt of this car, as you would call it. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, there's got to be uh, some continuity between the that. different cars without them being small, medium, and large. Let's take a look at the inside of this vehicle, and then we're going to take it for a drive, and you're going to join us. There are three different engine options and we're currently driving the X Pro. So we'll get an opportunity to drive the hybrid. The only thing we won't get a chance to drive will be the plug-in, which is coming in the future. So right now you can get the regular gasoline engine or the hybrid engine. And of course there are seven different trim levels and Paul and I will talk about that and our pros and cons. But in the meantime, as far as driving this vehicle, it is really easy to drive. The steering in the sport mode tightened right up here on these curvy roads. It's Coachella Canyon Way, which takes you from Palm Springs to San Diego. Nice and curvy. It's beautiful out here. The weather is spectacular and the cacti is as well. I would have to say overall, performance-wise, as expected, it's not a race car, but I, I have to say it does the job. It doesn't struggle to get going. And we are currently driving in the gasoline-powered vehicle. We'll get a chance to drive the hybrid as well. Uh, brakes are great. We had an incident where someone jumped in front of us, slam on the brakes. They work and they work well. Tons of standard safety features, which I also think is really important. And the fact that I still am totally in love with the blind spot cameras you put on your turn signal and the gauges, which are part of this 3D curved screen. 
shifts into a camera. I love it. Two 12.3 inch screens together. It's sort of like a long skateboard. My opinion, as far as looking at this technology, easy to use. You do have to get used to switching the screens from where climate control goes to the base controls for the main screen, but it literally has everything. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless, and charge ports everywhere. And if you've driven a Kia before, or even a Hyundai product, this is totally intuitive and shouldn't be a problem for you to feel comfortable. Um, the big thing with this X-Pro trim level is they're saying it's good off-road. Well, I don't think it's good like real off-road, but maybe light off-road. But we're gonna find that out. Um, we'll get a chance to drive that off-road. But as far as the vehicle and confidence behind the wheel, I think it does that. So let's see what Paul thinks. I remember the first Kia Sportage, the first generation, we did the program for it in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. The progression of this product since then, every step has been better. Every step has had more innovation. Every step has had more quality. It's astonishing to me to see how this family has grown. Now, this is an incredibly important vehicle, uh, not only to Kia, but I mean, you take a look at the sales numbers and clearly it's a vehicle that is being widely accepted. So what's different now? This is now eight inches longer, it's wider. It's got more ground clearance. The materials have improved. The design has improved. And the design wasn't bad before, but now it's, you know what, I, I came and I was expecting a refresh, but I wasn't expecting this much design change. However, from a driving perspective, I still love the, the instrumentation, this curved instrumentation that they've put in here. And I'm still astonished that the feature on here that so many people talk about, and I can't believe that the, believe that the industry hasn't copied it, is if you turn on your left signal over here where the tachometer shows up you get a camera off of here to look back at your blind spot you turn on the right signal you're going to be able to look at the blind spot over there and and if you just think of innovation is something that a car company does that another car company has yet to copy and yet nobody is doing that this same thing where you can look at the blind spots. It makes so much sense. The power, look, it's not a race truck. Rolls Royce used to say they never gave a number because they just said it's adequate. This is absolutely adequate for its intended use. We're going to run this off-road course, which uh, is kind of, we get it as to why we're doing it. Does anyone use these things off-road? Well, that's Maybe a, one. <laughs> yeah, you know, there just aren't that many people. If you want to do serious off-roading... There's vehicles for you, that. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to find something. You're going to go buy a Jeep. You're going to buy, you know, in this class, you, you might buy a Land Rover. Or uh, a Ranger or even a Maverick. Uh, yeah, sure. This is your basic compact SUV. Right. You know, you, you don't need this to go to Costco. Right, but this is capable going up a hill. And the cameras are a nice assist, good for about five miles an hour, and then they uh, they shut off. We've got a lot of off-road experience. We've done this all around the world, so <laughs> yeah. we have high expectations. <laughs> but if you're using this to go camping, you may not have to worry about it. And if you were on this much of a side incline when you had the kids in the back seat and your spouse in the not driver's seat, yeah. The screaming would be... <laughs> yeah, it would be, I mean, it'd probably yeah. be aggressive. So Kia wanted to make sure that they could show us their off-road capability. The cameras are there. There is a locking mechanism as well, but this is only on the X line. Correct. Here in the back seat, there is a lot more room, like Paul was saying, and it also has some really nice features, starting with the USB-C on the side of each of the seats. There's hooks for plastic bags, and then you've got this spot here on the back of the headrest, which you could put an iPad, you could hang things on. They really were thinking about who's using this car, and it's families, it's people doing things. Also, stuff, we all carry junk with us, pockets behind both seats, storage underneath the center console, also two vents. In the door, you've got a spot for drinks, and that's about it. There's not a lot back here, but there is a lot of space, and yet panoramic roof comes all the way back. We've talked about the size of the Sportage getting bigger. It's longer, it's wider, it's taller, more ground clearance. 
but this is where it really pays off for you a lot. Storage capacity is good. The old generation, 31 cubic feet of space. This one, 39 cubic feet, and that makes a big difference. And there is a uh, mini spare underneath here. 12 volt hookup here, which is good. Easy to flip down, bink, to get the, the, uh, the back seat down. You pick up nice space that way too. This was really well done, I like this. But that's a big, big plus in cargo uh, capacity. You know, before we get to the pricing, uh, the, the thing that we should be conveying as well is that Kia has really done a masterful job of jockeying their chip allotments and production and supply right. to where they've been able to not really be affected all that dramatically by the chip dip that right. we've been going. The chip shortage, right. And this is made in West Point, Georgia, where they make their other vehicles here right. for the U.S. But they also have an investment in a company called Mega Chip, which is out of Korea. That's where they're really smart. If you own everything, including the steel company, then you can control the supply chain, which yeah. other car manufacturers are now learning about. No, they're doing great. But by the way, I don't know if they do public tours. I'm sure they must do something. But both the, the, the West Point plant in Georgia, that yeah. Kia has and then the Hyundai plant in Birmingham, Alabama, in Alabama mm -hmm. I know that at some point in my life, I have had surgery in operating rooms <laughs> dirtier than those plants. It, they are a astonishingly clean. beautiful clean modern and they're doing that for efficiency also and i think that's a big yeah. part of it now let's get to the pricing the sx is the gas version and then you've got the hybrid plug-in pricing we don't have yet and of course we will drive the plug-in separately so what's the prices paul uh we're opening at uh twenty seven thousand dollars well that's for the hybrid twenty five thousand for the gas twenty five for the gas and they both top out you know when you look well, i said the hybrid first because i was standing next to it. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. So if you load it up, either way, you're looking about 36.1 or 36.7. Yeah. And again, if you load up all the goodies, which is the way we want it. Now, there aren't a lot of incentives right now because these vehicles are really hot and they're already yeah. coming into dealerships, which means if you want one, you probably should get on it because I think it offers a lot more than some of the other vehicles in this category. And this is also running for North American SUV of the year. And yeah. we shall see how it qualifies. It's hard to tell. We always say this car is going to win, but we never know because we don't know what else is coming out. No, we, we have no idea. Things that cheesed me off. You have a con on this vehicle? I do. Okay, tell us. When I first went to move it, we, we had to jockey the car about 10, 20 feet. Right. And so I started the car just like you would in your driveway if you wanted to move over there, just move it out of the garage and that. Right. And I put it into reverse and it won't go anywhere. Why not? I didn't have my seatbelt on. Oh, it has nannies. It's got nanny control. I hate nannies. I shut them all off. The start-stop technology. The, although it is good, so lane change reports a lot of the safety that this has. Those are terrific. Yes, including the smart park, which is what Hyundai calls it, but it's the remote park assist. So if you get into those tight parking spots, you can use your remote control to move the vehicle in and out. That's nice stuff, but you're right. That would drive me crazy. Also, this vehicle doesn't have, but some have that rear collision intervention, and you go into reverse, and your tree line is there, and it yeah. nails the brakes. Yeah. That I find frustrating. And that scares the hell out of me whenever that happens. So so what other negatives do you have on this vehicle? Um, let's a lot see. of trim levels. Uh, the trim levels were confusing. Seven trim levels and, is a And lot. I'm not sure that a dealer who is going to be keeping these in inventory at his store mm -hmm. is going to be able to navigate with a, with a customer. It's possible. Now they've got all these different trim levels from an entry level up to the off-roadable and the luxury line. I think they need to pare it down to like three different trim levels. It comes front wheel drive, all wheel drive, you know, three engine options. And I think once you start adding it up and, and does it come with this or that, I think it, it becomes a whole puzzle. And I yeah. think consumers get frustrated and then they'll just look to see what's on the lot, not knowing that there could be something they might want. So if, this, if that's the one negative and, I have. And this is true no matter what car you're looking at. If there are things that are really important to you, things that are really important to me are heated seats yes. and heated steering wheel. Yes, I like ventilated Those seats Those are there. Too. And yep, the vegan the, leather. The, also, this is becoming an issue in radio world. It is. Think How's about it? this. I want I want you to make sure that the radio is able to go to 87.7, right? Which is the lowest frequency for AM radio. That's the lowest no, frequency. No, that's FM. Oh, FM. 80, yeah. 80 87.7 is the lowest. You is, can go. Okay. Everybody sees me TV. Yeah. Okay. 
that's where they broadcast all of their music from. Really? And it's because we're all learning something new here today. Yeah. And that's something that I'm looking for in cars now. Right. And the stations are growing like wildfire in popularity across the country. Right. So and satellite radio, everything might, else might be important. On the positive side, I thought the car had a lot of great features and it drove really well. It had good brakes and tons of storage, which I think is really important for yeah. a car that you're going to use as a daily driver. And considering the, the area that this is in, this smaller SUV, you're getting a lot for your money. But Kia knows that. And that part of that is that warranty, that 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, which the Kia Hyundai line both have. And that, I think, is a major plus. Yeah, I find myself recommending their products, both uh, Kia and Hyundai. And Genesis. Uh, yeah, and Genesis. Yeah, they're all well, the same family. Well, we've covered a lot of these vehicles, and there's more on our website, including all the competitors. And the competitors are a very long list. Everybody has something in this category. If you have any questions, and Paul and I didn't cover them throughout our drive, this is our first drive. We'll each be reviewing this separately. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Either Paul or I will answer them. If you want to check out our website, that's in the description down below, as well as the podcast, social media for both Paul and myself. And of course, we appreciate your support on our Patreon page. And if you got value from this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And we do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.